Welcome to episode 200 of Monster Milo Review. This episode we have Finkelstein's Underground Comics Print Shop, as seen in Amazing Figure Modeler number 70. Finkelstein's Underground Comic Print Shop is a fun diorama I created sharing my love of Finks, comic books, and model kits. The idea came when I picked up the Da Vinci Printing Press by Academic Hobby Model Kits, and I noticed it was the perfect fit for the Mother's Worry Fink Kit by Ravel. I started building the diorama by going with a two wall and floor construction. I used a thin coat of paper mache from a recipe of Johnny's from ultimatepapermache.com. I love this recipe for bigger sculpts and it worked perfect for a rough thin coating on the walls to emulate old decaying plaster walls. One inch squares of cardstock were hot glued to the floor, cutting chunks out near the edge to simulate broken tiles. I painted the floor with a dark brown acrylic paint and dry brushed with lighter shades of khaki and off-white colors to look like beat up tile. Next, I painted the walls Spanish olive green and washed it all with a light coat of dark walnut wood stain thinned with mineral spirits to age and add a moldy look to the walls and floor. I added a light with an LED, an old switch and a battery. The light doesn't cast a large amount of light but it does add to the mood of the scene. Along with the printing press, I used some extra tables from the Aurora Monster Scenes gruesome goodies set from the early 70s. The figure, printing press, and table were all glued together, seamed and primed in black, base coated with a dark base of brown, and dry brushed to lighter colors and stained to enhance the detail. Once all the kits were pretty much done and I had the layout like I wanted it, it was time to start dealing with the scene. From the beginning, I knew I wanted the figure to have hair. Using orange craft doll hair that I glued in patches with tacky glue till I had the style of hair I desired. Next came the comic books. Lots of comic books. I used some of my favorite underground issues, scanned the covers, back covers, and some inside pages, which I scaled and cleaned up in Photoshop and had printed on silk stock paper. Using a glue stick, I glued every page down and flattened the book. I glued them in stacks, tied some down with strings, and left some loose for the floor and the box. I also created a comic shipping box with cardstock that I felt looked to be the width of a cardboard box in that scale and measured to fit two stacks of comics, like distributors ship comics. Again, I used sticky glue to glue the box together. I painted the box in a medium brown and finished by gluing the comics in the box. The posters were photographed and scaled and cleaned in Photoshop. Some were put on the wall with poster putty and masking tape cut into tiny pieces, and some were rolled like new. I sculpted a Fink-type rat in ZBrush, and my pal, Mr. Kit, printed it for me as I didn't have my printer at the time of this build. I painted it up and used strands from a broom for its whiskers. I added ink pans with colored ink, art plates made with cardstock, I sculpted a liquid spill on the top of the printing press with AV's epoxy sculpt and added a bottle, which is another old game piece. And I sculpted the paintbrush again out of AV's epoxy sculpt. A mouthwash bottle became a garbage can. I made some debris with unused art and balsa wood scraps. I glued the debris and the can down with white glue. I added drips, smears, spills on the floor. I added stacks of pages an open comic, and a 3D printed coffee cup with a spill and glued it all in place on the standalone table. I glued the rat and the comics where I wanted them and touched up everything I missed. All that said, every time I look at it, I want to add something new. I knew the second I saw the Da Vinci printing press, it was going to be used in a diorama just like this one. And I loved the whole process of building it. I've always been a huge Fink fan. I love the detail and the freedom to paint in the craziest colors imaginable, and I feel it allowed me some freedom to scale, as it was a fantasy piece from the get-go. Thank you to Terry Webb and David Fisher for choosing my piece to be included in their magazine. It's truly an honor. I go into more detail in the magazine. If you're interested, check out Amazing Figure Modeler 70 and a lot of other cool articles and available back issues at AmazingFigureModeler.com. You can see more Monster Models, how-to, artist profiles, and more at MonsterModelReview.com, and you can find us on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. I've been your host, Rob Madison, and thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.